Hello, Lakeside. Uh, it's Jason. I'm here with uh, Pastor Ken. We just wanted to touch base with you um, in regards to what's happening at a board level as we are looking forward um, at what our uh, mission, vision, um, what our focus is going to look like over the next little while and into the future for Lakeside. So um, some of you may know that, actually most of you should know, <laughs> We've talked uh, about how the board um, has this rhythm now of, of meeting every month. Um, one of those meetings is of course our business meeting where we get into the finances and the nitty gritty stuff that we have to do to operate the church. Um, and alternately on the other months, we are meeting to have vision meetings where we have been spending a fair amount of time together trying to discern where um, God is leading us and um, as you may know, um, with uh, COVID happening and the pandemic on, we've started to take a look at what opportunities has this created for us. Um, and we are looking at ways uh, that the church can continue to meet um, that maybe are not uh, some of the ways that we uh, typically think of, I'm guessing. So um, yeah, so Ken and I just wanted to bring you guys up to date with some of what um, the church is thinking, what the board is thinking, and just want to invite your your input into that as well. So, yeah, Ken, I don't, uh, I'm kind of rambling, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and there's lots going on, really, and, and so we wanted to make sure that you're, uh, you're up to date on what we've been thinking about, and, and obviously there's the factor of COVID that has maybe forced us or given us the opportunity in a positive way to think about these things. Yeah, it's been a bit of a catalyst, right? It's like, yeah, and we've talked about a lot of this stuff before, or maybe we've had these crazy ideas. We've had a number of crazy ideas and yeah. now we have to take a serious look at it now because of some of the limitations that COVID's causing for one instance, right? Right, yeah, and I mean, some of them, we'll, we'll share a little bit of a vision, sort of a br in broad brush strokes of where we see things in the next four or five years, but we talked about that, I think, a couple of years ago, Jason, just kind of in general terms, um, but didn't seem like the time, or maybe we weren't ready for it, or whatever it was, but now it's, uh, I think, I've, I've tried to think about this as an opportunity rather than just to focus on the challenges of this pandemic and as hard as, as it is and the restrictions that we're under, uh, it's also an opportunity to try some new things. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, if you look at what's been happening at Lakeside with backyard gatherings, um, I mean, I don't know that we would have thought of going to kind of that small group, home church, distributed kind of model uh, yeah. without, without COVID, right? <laughs> Uh, so the one way that we can continue to be in community, at least face to face with each other, has been through those backyard gatherings, meeting at people's yards, right? Where, um, yeah, I mean, I even think of, of of life groups or small groups and how we're calling them, and some have been functioning and been working well, and others just have struggled at times to get going, and now we're sort of forced into it. And I think a number of people have been pleasantly surprised. Um, at how well it's gone, I think. And some groups I think are, are really, really liking how it's working so far. So mm -hmm. it's just been interesting. It's not, it's not all been bad. We've been forced to do things maybe differently than what we would have planned, but um, the, there's been a lot of good uh, in it as well. And so it's just been different than, yeah. So I guess, I guess COVID kind of forcing our hand in a sense to, to try to do things maybe a little bit differently. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, and it, I mean, every church is going through this process, right? And, and different churches are coming up with different solutions. And um, we, just, we just really, I think as a board, pretty, very unanimously felt like this is an opportunity for us to re look at everything, um, not just how we're gathering on a Sunday, but on everything. And that includes, you know, what we do the rest of the week and how we structure our leadership team and staffing and all of that. Big questions, but um, I, you know, sometimes you need a pause or, or a time that's different in order to have room or motivation to talk about that kind of stuff. Life just goes on, right? Yeah, yeah. Church life just goes on and we just keep doing things the way we've done them. So um, 
yeah, I, in a lot of ways, this has been good. I mean, it's not been easy, but it's been good. So, yeah. and we've, we've tried to ask some questions. I mean, I, you know, I think we've been talking about, I feel like we've been talking about it a lot for 11 years. <laughs> you know, yeah. what does it mean to make disciples and what does that look like and how to best do that? And what's the mission that God is calling us to? And uh, one of the questions that the denomination uh, has it keeps throwing out at the churches in Canada is, you know, uh, what does it look like to take responsibility for our neighborhood? Right. And I always was kind of thinking about that in terms of, well, that means, you know, the neighborhood that surrounds the building where the church meets on Sunday, like how can we reach out to the downtown core? Right. Uh, yeah. And we've wrestled with that one partly because most of us don't, or none of us live right in the downtown core. Some of us work here, but we don't have contact, a lot of contact with the people that either live or work here. Right. We've tried some things, you know, we, you know, had that crazy idea of buying a laundromat, which it seemed was God's leading. And there was another way that he led us in. So we started our space. So that's been a chance to connect with the community and people that are working. Yeah. Actually today, as I'm sitting here in the back room, the, the whole front room is full of students and people who have small businesses and work remotely and like, just about all the seats are full. So, right. so it's pretty cool to see that. I mean, that's part of that vision of taking responsibility for our neighborhood. But I think uh, what I heard re more clearly, maybe I just wasn't listening very well, but was <laughs> that um, that doesn't mean just the geographical space around your Sunday gather the gathering place, whatever that looks like. Right. But it means your neighborhood, like where I live, where you live, uh, where we work the sports team or club that we're part of, you know, taking responsibility for our neighbors, their neighborhood. Uh, yeah. And, and I guess something to point out, it's not, this is not a question that's arised because of COVID. I mean, this is a no. question that we've been challenged with for a number of years now. Right. And yep. yeah, we, we, one of the things, you know, if I think back to a time when we seemed really unified, we talked about moving to the old live wire and we were unanimous and then the next big thing was okay why are we downtown um and that way i think was trying to answer that question uh how do we take responsibility for a neighborhood but uh, as you pointed out uh, the vast majority of us are only in that neighborhood for a few hours a week unless we have another reason to be there apart from where we gather together as a body right so um yeah i mean we all live somewhere we all have neighbors in the traditional sense. Like uh, we yep. typically think of neighbors of people who live next door to us or across the road or, you know, on our block. Um, and I think, yeah, it's a, it's a more, it's a larger question. Um, not just, well, especially if the church is actually us as the believers, right. us as a people, right? We're, we're, it's not, it's not the building where we're meeting, but it's us. So then where are our, neighbors or where are our neighborhoods right and it's it's where god's placed us and so yeah how do we care for that yeah yeah so part of the if there's any if there's blessings through of a pandemic one of them is that we've been forced to think about that think of uh, uh the church in, in different ways probably more biblical ways that it's not a, it's not just about the sunday gathering uh, the worship service or the building or the staff or whatever, that's not the sum total of what the church is. It's who we are all the time. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we've talked about is uh, shifting, shifting some things like shifting our energies. So whether that's uh, time or it's resources uh, like volunteers or staff time or money, uh, you know, a lot of it gets focused into a, um, into a, an hour and a half, two hours a week. Right. It's typical. I mean, that's not just us, but um, what would it look like to shift some of that energy and that those finances to the other six days or so in a week. Right. And, and just to resource uh, people in just the places where God's put them. Right. So it's hard to do that when you're just, you're involved in, you know, organizing and planning and, you know, leading Sunday mornings week after week after week. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think, I mean, I, I don't know, I, I kind of default to this setting at times where I'm like, well, you and 
Leanne, and it was previously Amelia, and then it was Pam. Like you guys are, you guys are the staff, right? So the things that the church is doing, yeah, there's some volunteers coming alongside, but then oh well, Ken needs to do it, or, 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 you know, Amelia, Leanne, wh- whoever needs to do it because well, they're they're being paid to do it. But yeah. we've sort of landed in that place because it's. I'm not saying us necessarily Lakeside, but the ch- churches in general, just because that's kind of the way it's been done for the last little while, right? But um, if we're really supposed to be an expression of, you know, as the body with all of our giftings being used, then there's a number of us who aren't using our gifts to their full potential, right? Because there's just not necessarily, maybe there's not a place on a Sunday for that to happen. Yeah. We haven't encouraged it. Or um, maybe we default to thinking, oh, well, I'm not staff. So that means I'm not supposed to be doing some of that too, right? So there's a couple of sides to that. But yeah, yeah. and I mean, I think, you, you know, you mentioned some of the, some of the stories that have been shaping some of the discussions of the, the board we were talking about that a little bit earlier before we started recording, but um, yeah. one of them being, um, and I'm, I know I'm jumping out of order here again, but uh, okay, so. talk about all the emphasis on a, on a Sunday, right? Like spending yeah. an hour and a half to whatever and having the staff do it. And that was um, the idea of, of a chessboard, which you shared in a sermon a while back, right? Where um, when you're learning to play chess, uh, different people will encourage you, right? If, if someone that knows what they're doing, they would encourage you to, to play without a queen um, only because at, at that point you would learn how to use your, your other pieces a bit more effectively, right? So that down the road, um, you know, after a while of learning how other pieces work correctly um, and, and the things that they can do um, and you eventually start playing with a queen, you're not so reliant just, just on the queen. So I don't know how many of you have played chess. I know Robin and, and Ronan and, and Matt and I have, and even Emma actually have connected over Zoom a couple of times to play chess. Um, and I know a lot of people, you will tend to rely on your queen because she can go anywhere and do anything in any direction and take all the pieces, right? But if you don't develop the rest of your, of your pieces, you don't develop the rest of your game, you become too reliant on that. And a lot of times, uh, I did this with Matt the last time we were playing chess. We opened things up and there was a chance to exchange queens. I exchanged queens and he just let up this huge sigh like, no, because now he didn't know what to do because his queen had been removed, right? And, yeah. and we're, li- we're like that, right? Yeah. In a sense, everything goes into Sunday. Maybe we do have a few other things that we do, but um, I, I think of Lakes, I don't know that we necessarily have fully developed that. Some, some things have, but I don't know if we have fully developed some of the other pieces. And maybe we haven't even identified what some of those other pieces are mm. to be the church and to holistically um, be a representation of the body where we are living out uh, our faith, like where we are, um, you know, not just on Sunday, but the rest of the week, right? Um, there was a song, I think it's 10th Avenue North, talking about wherever I go, I bring the kingdom come. Like wherever you're going as a believer, you're bringing it. But I think we kind of turn that off and we think, okay, well, Sunday's the day for church. And right. I mean, I'm speaking really generally, but um, yeah. But how, do, how, 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 how can we get to the place where wherever we go, we bring the kingdom come because we are his ambassadors, right, in, in the world. And um, you know, it's kind of a tangent off of the queen thing, but um, Sunday's been that queen for us. Um, and now we, we haven't been able to play with the queen. So we started developing some new things and we have backyard gatherings going and we're gonna start meeting as a larger group once a month kind of thing, right? But so that's been one of the, one of the things informing or, or helping shape some of the discussions that we've had, right? Yeah, and uh, that, that's one of the reasons why in a, in a sense we haven't been in a real rush to get back to every week Sunday morning gatherings because um, I think there's some things that I, well, as a board, I think we've been saying, feeling like there's things we need to learn and experiment with, and that's gonna take some time. Uh, and for people to feel comfortable and, and, and better equipped to use the gifts that God's given to them and to play the role within the body that they're called to play uh, and to, that everybody gets to, uh, John Wimbro used to use this phrase, everybody gets to play in the kingdom. It's not just for the select few, you know, that have the, you know, that are paid a salary or have seminary training or whatever it is, but uh, we want to uh, enable and equip and release people for, for the work of the kingdom where they are. Um, So uh, that's why we haven't, because I think what'll happen is if we just jump back into that pattern again, immediately, 
um, we're just we'll just derail that the progress that we need to make in, in using the other pieces on the board to use that analogy. Yeah, and essentially, um, I, like some of these things, you know, you've been I talked about this before, but the first time meeting you was at a missional small group at the at the um, Lawton's house, right? Um, so you've been talking about this for a long time and I feel like we get fired up at times to do some things and we start down that road and then something happens and we, you know, we let our foot off the gas and then we just go back to how I, I'm like this anyways, go back to, you know, how it was. It's just, it's just easier. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not an urgent, important thing, but it's a, I don't know, maybe it's a comfort versus important thing, right? We're so used to, that's the way we've always done it. And so yeah. when are we going to get back to how we've always done it? Where maybe that's not the most Im important thing we could be, be doing right now. Maybe there's something else that God's kind of calling to calling us to. And, and, and COVID has been the, the catalyst to say, hang on, now you can't do this the way you used to. So, you know, what, what's going to happen now? And backyard yeah. gatherings, I think, and I don't, I mean, it'd be great to hear from people. That'd be something that you, know, you guys could get a hold of us, anyone listening or want to talk with us about is how the backyard gatherings how you've been finding them and how they've been been going because i think people have had to step in to do things that maybe they haven't been asked to do before or mm -hmm. um you know in in our group maybe with sorry april and, <laughs> and henry but without even necessarily really asking it's just sort of like hey yeah can you let so-and-so know that this is happening or, or henry described the sermon to us because cindy and i hadn't watched it the last one key sermon right so henry gave us an overview of what had had gone on right so mm -hmm. um because there's only so many of us in a backyard gathering, we have to, you know, we all have to contribute in, in, in some way. And so yeah. um, you're starting to function in a way. Whereas I think if we just go back to meeting on a Sunday again, we might not, we might get comfortable. Like I'm, I'm susceptible to that. Just go back to, you know, the way it was and, oh, well, I don't need to do anything because, you know, Ken's doing it or Ken Jameson's doing announcements or Jim's going to preach or whatever else, right? Um, yep. Someone yep. else is going to do this. And so then I can just sit back and come and, go to church rather than be the church so yeah and i think one of the things that got my attention too was uh, uh i can't remember when this was but it was several months ago we asked bishop cliff to do a message for us on video so and uh he was talking about um he showed us a slide with a graph of uh church engage engagement or attendance i think it was uh in canada uh over the last, since 1950 Right. And uh, it was pretty well a straight downward curve. Uh, there was not very many upticks. It was pretty well downward from 50, 1950 on. Hmm. That's a long time. That's my whole lifetime that's been in decline. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, and so his point was, you know, if we just, if we're motivated to just, okay, as soon as COVID's over or, you know, they get a, a, a vaccine or whatever, or even just as soon as we possibly can and the government lets us, we're going to get back to what we're always doing. You know, right. we just get back to normal. Um, what we're really saying is we're just going to jump right back in on that downward curve. And uh, because what we're doing is not leading to kingdom growth and, and uh, we're just declining. And so, yeah, every congregation has to make that decision. Do I just want to jump back and do what we've always done and continue <clears> to decline? Or, you know, or do we want to do something different? So that to me kind of brings some urgency. That's a long, slow decline. <laughs> Not so slow sometimes. Yeah, uh, it's 70, 70 years, right? Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's time, definitely, a old past time for us to do something different. So that's why we're, we're going to be um, rec uh, recommending some, some fairly dramatic changes. They're not easy, and we'll be experimenting with some things, but... I guess the alternative in, in my thinking is, is just do the same old and continue to decline. Uh, sad to say, but I think that's where it's going. Mm -hmm. 